Did you know that you don't have to be a professional athlete to suffer from athlete's foot? Hello everyone! In this video, we are going to explain about one of the most common foot infection, athlete's foot. Athlete's foot is a contagious fungal infection of the upper layer of the skin of the foot. Trichophytin, the fungus that causes athlete's foot, can only infect the skin in a favorable condition such as in warm and moist environments. This infection is commonly seen in athletes and it is also known as tinea pedis and ringworm of the foot. There are four types of athlete's foot. The first one is toe web infection or also known as interdigital infection which usually starts between the fourth and the fifth toes. Bacteria can infect the area of the toe web infection and make it worse. The second type of athlete's foot is moccasin infection. This is an infection of the sole of the foot. Rash may also develop along the sole up to the side of the foot. Foot with moccasin infection will appear dry with cracked and peeled skin. Next is vesicular infection. This type of infection is characterized by fluid-filled blister on the sole or the upper part of the heel. Small, red blisters usually pop up on the sole or between the toes. Bacteria can infect any ruptured blister and antibiotics may be needed for this type of infection. The last one is ulcerative infection. It is a rare type of athlete's foot. Sometimes, feet develop ulcers and sores that are vulnerable to bacterial infection. The ulcer may ooze discharge and can be very painful. Causes Athlete's foot is caused by tinea fungus, which is trichophytin, that thrives in warm and moist surroundings. A person may get the infection via direct contact with an infected person or by touching contaminated surfaces. As the tinea fungus grows on foot, the person will get the infection known as athlete's foot. Risk factors Firstly, Walking barefoot in public places such as locker rooms and swimming pools increase the risk of athlete's foot. Secondly, frequently wearing damp socks or tight-fitting shoes. Sharing towels, shoes or socks with an infected person. Next, minor skin or nail injury on foot is more prone to getting the infection. And lastly, a person with sweaty foot increases the risk of getting the infection. Now, we move on to the signs and symptoms for athlete's foot. The first one is sign of dryness around the tooth area. This dryness can often lead to flakiness of the skin with peeling dry skins. The second one is where the two nails are pulled off from the nail bed itself. It usually occurs in the big two rather than the other tooth. New tooth nail will grow and replace it within 11 months to fully regrow. Third is sign of redness. This is also known as the red scaly rash obtained from the infection and sometimes feels a bit stinging in the affected area. Fourth is the presence of blisters. Usually, if it is only white fluid, it is non problematic as it is in early stage but need to be treated. But if it turns into yellow pus, it is a sign of infection as it is considered a severe case already. Now, the last one is the irritation. The irritation is also another sign of itching obtained from fungal infection in the two area as the patient will have the urge to always scratch in the affected area. Diagnosis of athlete's foot. To help confirm the diagnosis and rule out other conditions, your doctor might perform skin lesion potassium hydroxide exam. Here are three easy steps on how the test will be done. Step 1. Take skin sample. The affected skin or nail is gently scraped with a small scalpel or the edge of a glass light. Step 2. Treat with potassium hydroxide. The scrapings from the skin are placed on a microscope slide and a few drops of a potassium hydroxide solution are added. 
step 3. Observe. The slide is heated for a short time and then examined under the microscope. Complications of athlete's food. Spread. Athlete's food infection can spread to other parts of the body. People who scratch or pick at the infected part of their feet may develop a similar infection in one of their hands. Secondary bacterial infection. It is a type of bacterial infections that occur in individuals that have already been infected by fungi. In this case, patient food might be swollen, painful, and hot. Onychomycosis. The fungi associated with athlete's food can also infect your toenails, a location that tends to be more resistant to treatment. The treatment for athlete's food. Many antifungal preparations can be used for the treatment of athlete's food. The first preparation is the Benafin 1% cream. An example of commercial product available containing this drug is Cryobic Gold and Tefin. It is a cream that is available over the counter and can be purchased without requiring a prescription. The drug acts by preventing the synthesis of the cell wall and weaken the cell wall of the infective fungal. The medication can be applied once or two times a day for one week. Some of the side effects associated with this drug is local irritation such as redness, itching, and stinging. The second type of cream that can be used for an athlete's food is imidazole antifungal cream such as clotrimazole 1% cream and miconazole 2% cream. The drug act by causing damage to the cell membrane of the fungus that causes loss of permeability barrier of the infective fungus. Clotrimazole cream may be applied 2 to 3 times daily while miconazole cream may be applied 1 to 2 times daily. Some of the side effects from this cream are local irritation that can include mild burning sensation and itching. How to use the antifungal cream? First, you must clean and thoroughly dry the area that needs to be treated. Then, apply enough cream to cover the affected area and the surrounding affected area. After applying the cream, you need to wash your hand. You need to continue using your medication for at least one week after the disappearance of the sign and symptom of the athlete's foot. This is to prevent relapsing infection. We have always heard that prevention is better than cure. That is because it has the ability to improve quality of life while also lowering the cost of treating the disease. As a result, it is important to prevent acquiring athlete's foot. To begin, Wash your feet with soap and water every day and thoroughly dry them. Second, do not share socks or shoes, as this can lead to the spread of fungus. Third, wear sandals or shoes rather than going barefoot in public areas to protect your feet. Fourth, alternate pairs of shoes to allow your shoes to dry out between uses, as moisture encourages the growth of fungus. Following that, Wearing breathable socks and shoes helps to pull moisture away from your skin. Apply powder to your feet on a regular basis, preferably with antifungal properties. Change and wash your socks on a regular basis and replace them if your feet get too sweaty. Lastly, make sure your feet are dry, especially between your toes. When you get home, go barefoot to allow your feet to air out. To drive the point home, Prevention is better than cure.